bow hunting. It's perfect. To me, it's the best example of risk and reward. The higher the draw weight, the harder you must pull. You want a heavy arrow? Get ready for bigger pin gaps. And you want to shoot an older buck? You'll have to pass him up as a three and four year old. Every decision we make in the sport comes at a price. And I think that's why we all love it. Well, uh, one of the things that my dad, who started the company, um, always taught, and you've probably heard this from, from other things that we've done, but you're only as good as you can measure. So anytime we come up with uh, a new design, uh, we, we want to make something uh, easier to machine or whatever it is, it needs to be tested. So we actually test the way we test. We want to make sure that our testing is accurate. So any, any new product, it has been uh, as tested as we possibly can make it before that product hits the market. So that usually takes years. My goal is to make our bows look as sexy as they can every year. Last year and this year, the, the focus is really three feet. Um, I guess we've been kind of focused a lot on how the, the bow performs in the field. Um, and we've really kind of missed the importance of people experiencing the bow at the dealer. You know, it's, it's a evolution for us. We, you know, we're still relatively new to the game of, of building compound bows. It's really looking back several years and seeing a, a progression of getting closer to what the customer is looking for and, and improving that technology. So, I mean, every year our, our goal is to be better than we were the year before, uh, just striving for the best that we can build. Like we can continue to chase technical specs and new materials and stuff like that, but ultimately it has to come down to like whose product is the easiest to use. And that's gonna be the product that wins. Every year I rethink this part of my setup, my arrow build. It's not that I'm unsatisfied, I guess I've just come to enjoy the process. And each year I think the same thing. Am I trying to overcomplicate this? Between weight, veins, helical, all these things I consider, do all these little details really matter? But I enjoy knowing I control the outcome of the arrow. It's like I am the conductor of an orchestra. All these pieces together, they make up something great. There is really something romantic about the flight of an arrow when everything is in sync. When that finally happens, it seems to be all worth it.
One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's hang a camera right in here somewhere. I guess welcome to Southern Oklahoma. We've already seen two really good bucks. The first one, we've called them unicorn. We got trail camera pictures of them all day yesterday. Not sure if we had good enough camera light at that point, but he was at 15 yards right in front of us. And then this tall eight with kickers. Got a bunch of pictures of him yesterday. In this ranch we're hunting is uh, at the start of a management program and they're trying to shoot five-year-old deer. And because Oklahoma can shoot two bucks, they're looking to also call out the management deer. Uh, somewhat of a new thing for Nick and I. We don't do a whole lot of you know management in that regard. But we're gonna do our best here in Oklahoma. Something tells me we're not gonna be without deer until dark. But I will leave it here. Tom doesn't pass deer like that. But I'm willing to. When you have an opportunity like we have in front of us right here, this Oklahoma property, we've been on it for 36 hours, 48 hours, I guess, total since first getting here. One day of scouting, day hunting. And what we have pictures of and what we've laid eyes on is pretty darn special. This has the potential for management. And if our small group of guys wants to manage, then manage we shall. Boy, um, <laughs> at what point do I feel like I've come up with the next great idea? Uh, so it's, there's never really like a singular point where it's like, all right guys, you know, rip the brief, here's what we're doing next year. I know like typically, you know, during the design year, we'll, um, you know, we'll shift from designing, you know, fin wrapping up the previous year's product to, um, uh, shifting into like more of a support role and then during that time we'll just start playing around with ideas and in the case of like the inline cam it was like three or four months before I had convinced myself or Nate that hey this is an idea worth pursuing and just one day had um, had a thought about you know kind of like hey what what could be the next the next version of the parallel cam and it was really just sitting down it's like well, what are we trying to do and it was just like i had this idea for a couple years so made the first one you know nate said that's never going to work and um, okay so i had to prove him wrong all of a sudden and 
once you get the first couple prototypes made and you're able to actually handle it like and play with it in person that's usually when everything starts to come together it's like hey there's a real idea here you know all right let me yeah. clarify I was <laughs> <laughs> you said i said I didn't say it would never work. He didn't say, he was like. <laughs> I just said, what I saw was just, it was terrible at the beginning. I'm just joking. He's like, he's right. He's actually, like, this is, like, the, this is the parallel case. He yeah. says, what yeah. you're trying to kill my life's work is exactly the words that you told me. <laughs> and you got all sappy about it and mopey no, and you know. went through it. And then 30 seconds later. Much like designing a bow and building around a particular idea, I was fixated on something specific as well. It was a buck we called Halo. I studied maps trying to figure this deer out, scouting and even hunting in all parts of the farm, and it kept leading me back to this same stand. And if anyone knows me, I tend to analyze maps, and to a fault, some would say, I seem to overthink the process. But I would say that I'm just trying to look at every single detail so that I can make the best decision. Regardless, we knew he was here and I was going to keep after him. say enough about this hunt. <laughs> I could say that. Spot. 
in the last 12 hours as per the trail cameras. This is beautiful. This is exactly what a bowhunter waits for. Right here. <laughs> We're in the middle of it. If it's anything like last night, we better buckle in because it's just plain insanity in this set. So, and uh, I'm sure it'll be the first. What? I just heard a grunt. Yeah, multiple. I would love to tell you that everything went as planned, that after countless sits, the story of Halo has a happy ending. And if I could rewind, I would not change a thing up until this moment. But that is the thing about bow hunting. It all boils down to one moment, which translates to a lot of pressure coming down to just a few seconds to execute something perfectly.
From a young age, we are conditioned to think that shooting a bow can be easy and you can be, well, perfect. We watched cartoons and movies about Robin Hood and he never missed. By 1922, comedian acrobat Douglas Fairbanks had given the elaborate costume spectacle a permanent place in motion pictures. And it was later in life when we realized how truly difficult it is and how there are so many variables in making a shot even come close to perfect. Target panic can come in the form of, you know, a physical form, it can come in a mental form, and sometimes they kind of collide together. A lot of hunters and a lot of target archers, depending on what style of release you're shooting, can create that build-up anxiety of, all right, I'm on my trigger, I feel it, bang, I want to shoot. And in your head, your mind is saying, I'm on the trigger, I need to shoot. Or, my pin is in the yellow, I need to shoot. It's on the 12, I need to shoot. So not only is it a physical form, because you feel that release, it might be too light, it, you know, um, but your, your mind is telling you this shot needs to go now. You're not really listening to the actual process of the shot. I know for me personally, I've had that problem uh, a lot over the years where it's like, you know, I get on my target and my pin goes, won't just sit where I want in the middle. It'll, you know, I can hold it super steady right below it, but I can't get it back up. It feels like I have a truck hanging on the end of that stabilizer. Me personally, I don't know if there's really a such thing as a perfect shot. I think that there are things that you can do throughout your shot process that will get you to a more consistent shot over time, um, but a lot of that does have to deal with your shot process, and I also think it has a lot to do with your mental game, because that shot process it has a lot to do with how you perform mentally. Um, archery is a very mental game, you know, you figure you know, a lot of people say it's 90% of the time you're in your own head and only less than 10 you're actually shooting your bow. So it makes more sense to work on that shot process and the mental aspect of the game um, sometimes than it does the physical side of things. Don't let 
Is there such a thing as a perfect bow? Absolutely not. And anyone who says so is, well, I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> no, I don't think it's possible to make a perfect bow uh, just because there are too many different, like we've learned at this point that there are just too many different types of people who all want different things. Um, there's cause and effects of every bow and, and there's certain aspects of a bow that people focus on. And, and ours is accuracy, which we believe will be the, the end all be all. And it's one of those things that will will never reach that perfection of a perfect bow. I don't think it's achievable to make a perfect bow, but that's ultimately what you strive for. Um, you have that idea of what you think is today is a perfect bow and you work towards it. So it's something you strive for. Will we ever get there? I, I don't think that's achievable and think for anybody. No, because there's too many opinions on what that perfect bow is. Um, some guys, if, if they can't goop at 100 yards, it's like, and it doesn't matter anything else. Some guys are, if the thing's over 30 inches axle axle, they don't care. Um, but that's the fun part, is, um, is pursuing that. The, the idea of a perfect bow is definitely something that gets you going every day. You know you're never gonna achieve it, but maybe you could get closer than anybody else.
west wind this morning in Ohio. Rainy overcast again. Seems like that's all we've been getting. Yesterday we got soaked. Day before we got soaked. Weather's supposed to break tomorrow, so we could see some movement this morning. Couple of does. About 80 yards down. Good buck behind him. I don't know what it was. He's right through this green stuff. It's D2. You see him through there? 90 yards, maybe. You still see him when he dropped down. He's a great deer. I passed him up last year once or twice. I know Tom passed him up. We had hopes he'd blow up and he's a great deer this year. Still not very tall tines, but mass and a lot of points. That was cool to see him and on the hoof. I got excited for a second there. Not over yet. I mean, there's still a lot of morning left. The only downfall is my time in Ohio is very limited right now, so. Go right here, Jordan. Right to left, right through the screen for you. Buck. That looks like T2. It's a good deer, Jordan. Right on the road. Right to the left. By definition, perfection means things as good as they can possibly get. I think we use the word perfect all too much. A surfer going out into the ocean looking for the perfect wave. When a pitcher doesn't give up a walker hit, we call it a perfect game. Or when we as hunters look for the perfect tree target archer looking to execute the perfect shot, or even a bow manufacturer trying to make the perfect bow. I didn't love the shot at first. 
but he is down right there. Give me some money. Just a big 10 point. He must have done a big circle on us. I grunted a few times. And then, right to us. We talk about trying to make the perfect shot, and I'm always, I'm watching his left leg the whole time saying he's got to open it up and he's kind of cornering too and uh sometimes perfect doesn't happen but you're always looking for that perfect shot and like we talked about cornering too once this dough busted it was now or never you gotta be quick Maybe there are moments that are perfect. But if that was the case, why would we keep looking forward to what's in the future? Maybe it's because by nature, we are never satisfied. And I think when it comes to bow hunting, it's impossible to achieve perfection, which to me is what makes it perfect. We're forever students of the game. And as long as we do this, then we will always be chasing perfection. Well, I'm running, I'm running like my hands on fire, and I don't intend to stop even when my legs grow tired. And yes, I'm stumbling. Just like you, we will never quit. Yeah. Of my That's what I drive. No, really. I was just joking. <laughs> and what you're looking for are um, shorter statements, or how, how is it going to be? I'll focus towards short sweep. But okay. <laughs> okay.